Okay, so before we start this video, we need to have written observations from the uh, practical at the end of the last video. Also, some of you will have done the extension to have a predict of what will happen to the mass of the product compared to the mass of the reactant. Okay, so what we're going to use this to do is write ourselves a conclusion, but we're going to build up to it. So, what is a conclusion? A conclusion is what we write at the end of a practical that tells us what has happened during this practical, showing what we've observed and what's the science behind it. So, some of the observations that we should have seen, the most obvious one I think, is that we saw a colour change, going from like a bluey green turquoise colour to black. So like this on the left to this on the right. And the answer to what happens to the mass is the mass of the substance in the crucible has decreased. So the mass of this black solid on the right hand side of the screen will be less than the mass of the green solid on the left hand side of the screen. So what does this tell us? I'll give you a second to think about this. What does it tell us if we saw a colour change and if the mass of the substance has decreased? Okay, so a colour change tells us that a chemical reaction has taken place and the mass of the substance in the crucible decreasing means a gas was given off. This one's a little less obvious uh, to see why, but it goes back to the starter question about the log and the ash. So the reason that the mass of the solid is um, going to be less afterwards is because a gas has given off. It said in the video that we form carbon dioxide, so this will be lost to the atmosphere, so this solid will weigh less than what we had at the start. Okay, so the chemical formula for copper carbonate is CaCO3. So what gases could be made from the elements in this compound? Pause the video and have a go. What gases could you make out of the elements in this compound? Okay, so we've not come across any gases that have calcium in. So we're going to ignore calcium for this bit, but with CO3. Well, there's two options that I can think of. Either we can make carbon dioxide, which is CO2. We can make that out of this. Or oxygen, which is O2. So those are two options that I've got. If you've got more, that's fantastic. Okay, so... What we actually saw in this reaction was the thermal decomposition of copper carbonate, as we said in the Ames. And our equation is going to look like this. We're getting copper carbonate, and we're turning it into carbon dioxide, which was lost to the atmosphere. So just given off as bubbles. And also copper oxide. Now this was the black solid left behind at the end. Now you notice that we started off with one substance, the copper carbonate, and we've ended up with two different substances, the carbon dioxide and the copper oxide. So for those of you who feel confident with the symbol equations, this is what it'll look like. So CuCO3 for copper, for Cu, carbonate, CO3, goes to carbon dioxide, which is CO2, and copper oxide, which is CuO. Now take a second just to double check that that is balanced. See if there are the same number of each element on either side. Well, there's one copper on this side, one copper on this side. There's three oxygens on this side, and there's one, two, three on this side. There's one carbon on this side, and there's one carbon on this side. So yes, that is a balanced equation. Okay, and as we've already said, carbon dioxide is a gas which was lost to the air. And this is why the mass has decreased. Okay, so what I would like you to do, you can either copy this into your books or I will have attached um, a document with this on that you can print off to label, whichever is easier for you. And I would like you to label this diagram telling me what is the name of the substance we started with, 
what would we call this? What is the name of the product and what is the name of the gas given off? There is a, on the next slide, um, a bit more help. So if you feel like you need it, skip ahead a little bit. If not, pause the video now and have a go. So for those of you who need a little more help, these are the four labels that I'd like you to put onto the diagram for me. So give yourself a couple of minutes to do that now. Okay, so we started off with copper carbonate, our green solid, and we call the flame heat. I'm just going to call it heat. Okay. Then the gas given off was carbon dioxide, and the black solid left behind was copper oxide. So give yourself ticks in green pen if you got that right, and make your corrections if you didn't. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and use all of that science that we've just been through to see if we can write a good conclusion. So we're going to follow this format to make sure it's perfect. So this is peel. I don't know if any of you have come across this before. But first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our point. Okay, so you're going to say what happened during the reaction and what kind of reaction was it. Next, you're going to give me your evidence. So how do you know what proved that. So what scientific evidence do you have for this? And the evidence you have is your observations. Then we're going to explain using the science to back up what we've said. So how does our evidence fit to the theories we've been learning about in this lesson? And then if you made a prediction, which was the extension from an earlier task, um, to predict what would happen to the mass, then see if you can link your prediction back to the points that you're making. Okay. Now, if you're struggling with this, go back and watch the, this video again, so all the science will be explained to you. Okay. All right. So let's give it a go. Let's write our conclusions following the Peel format. Okay. So we're going to say, what do we find? Did we meet the aims of the practical? How do you know? Remembering to use the peel format. Now, this is going to be quite a long task. I want you to try your best for this because this is something I'm going to look at when we come back. Um, so give yourself a, about 10 minutes to give that a go. Okay? Okay, once you've finished your conclusions, we're going to look at what are the similarities and differences between combustion and thermal decomposition. So I'd like you to draw this table in your books and go through as many similarities and differences as you can and write them down under each heading. Again, if I just give you about five minutes to do this, pause the video now. So, similarities. Both of them require heat. So, for thermal decomposition, remember it's got that word thermal in, so it requires heat. And with combustion, it always requires a bit of heat to start the reaction off. Think about if I have a, a lump of coal, I'm going to have to put a match to it to set it on fire. Likewise, if I had a bit of petrol, I'd have to put a, a match or a bit of fire to it to, to start the reaction going. We know that both reactions can produce CO2. So we've seen when we burn fuels, it often produces carbon dioxide. And in thermal decomposition, the one that we looked at today produced um, carbon dioxide also. Now the differences that I got is that only one reactant in thermal decomposition. However, there are two reactants in combustion. Because in combustion, we always need oxygen to react with the fuel. So there's two reactants. Whereas thermal decomposition, it's when one reactant breaks down into more than one product. Another difference, combustion requires oxygen. We can't do combustion if we don't have oxygen. Whereas thermal decomposition, all we need is the thing we're trying to break down 
and heat. We don't require oxygen. Another difference is thermal decomposition leads to a greater number of products than combustion. So with thermal decomposition we always get two or more products coming from one reactant. Whereas in combustion we start off with two um, reactants and it often leads to two products which are carbon dioxide and water. Okay, I'm going to go through a little quiz together now. So you're going to follow this along with me. So you can jot down the answers in your book as we go. And I'll give you plenty of time between each one. So which of the following is a thermal decomposition reaction? I just want you to write down the correct answer in your books. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. If you need a bit more time, please feel free to pause the video. So the correct answer is A. We've got one product, uh, sorry, one reactant that breaks down to form two products. In all of the other uh, reactions, we don't have this rule followed. So for this first one, we've got two different reactants. So this can't be thermal decomposition. In the second one, we do only have one reactant, but it's not breaking down to more than one product. It's just one um, reactant going to one product. So this isn't thermal decomposition either. Okay, two. PbCO3, or lead carbonate, decomposes to lead oxide and carbon dioxide. Write the symbol equation. If you're struggling with this one, flip back through these slides and you can use the copper carbonate as an example to help you answer this question. Again, if you need more time, please feel free to pause it. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And our answer is PBCO3, which is our lead carbonate produces lead oxide, which is PBO, and carbon dioxide, CO2. Now, if you found this one difficult, one tactic we can use, so we know that our reactant is just going to be PBCO3. There's no other reactants, so we've got this side of the equation already sorted. Now, we know that we're making carbon dioxide, which is CO2. That's something we should know from the last topic that we've done. Now, if I take carbon dioxide out of this, what do I have left? If I take away one carbon and two oxygens, what do I have left? I've got one lead atom and one oxygen atom. So I know lead oxide is PBO. So what is needed for a thermal decomposition reaction to happen? A. Oxygen, B. Heat, or C. Good weather. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. So the answer is B, just heat is needed. Question four, the reaction below is a thermal decomposition. We've got 2KClO3 goes to 2KCl plus 3O2. So this one is a lot trickier. If you're struggling, go back to your definition of what a thermal decomposition reaction is, and that should help us out.
just going to answer true or false. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. The answer is true because we start off with one product, we heat it up, and it breaks down into more than one product. Okay, and that's it. Well done guys, you've done an absolutely fantastic job. The homework will be attached on Share My Homework as well.